Welcome to Electron Line. Now we're going to explore the concept of admittance. Admittance is kind of like <laughs> Let me try this one again. All right. Line. <laughs> now let's talk about okay. the concept of admittance. Admittance is to inductance. Oh man. <laughs> oh. oh. Hmm. I think I'm going to try this differently. All right. Okay, Welcome ready? to our lect... Ah! <laughs> I need a break. <laughs> Welcome to our lecture line. Now let's explore the concept of admittance. Admittance happens to be the inverse of impedance. So the best way to explain it, that it's the inverse of the impedance. Another way to look at it, maybe I should put these marks on there, would be to read the sentence and you can say that the amount of the current through a branch is proportional to its admittance. Admittance, kind of the word like admit, allowing it to go through and that's kind of the way you want to look at it. The greater the admittance, the greater the amount of current flowing through a branch in the circuit. Admittance is equal to 1 over the impedance, the inverse of impedance, and so therefore is equal to the current divided by the voltage. You can see therefore that the admittance is definitely proportional to the uh, current in the circuit. And of course this equation refers to the frequency domain because just like impedance, admittance does have a phase angle depending upon the, the elements in the circuit. If there's capacitance and uh, inductance in the circuit, there will be a phase angle to the admittance. So if we can imagine that the impedance is written as the resistance plus J times the reactance, then we can write the admittance in the same way, a real part and an imaginary part. So we have equal to the conductance plus J times what we call the susceptance. Now the conductance is the inverse of resistance, the susceptance is the inverse of the reactance. Now if we start again with the equation that the admittance is equal to the conductance plus J times the susceptance that is equal to 1 over Z and Z can be written as this. If we now write both the numerator and the denominator as the complex conjugate of the denominator here to get rid of the J in the denominator, notice we end up with R minus J times X divided by R squared plus X squared. So the admittance Y can be expressed in terms of only the resistance and the reactance. And then if we separate that into the real part and the imaginary part, then this here would then be considered what we call the conductance, and this part right here with the negative sign would be considered the susceptance. And so that's then explained right here, where the conductance can be written as the resistance over the impedance, and the susceptance can be written as the negative of the reactance over the impedance, the ratio of those two. Note that if there's no reactants in the circuit at all, no capacitors or inductors, then the admittance simply becomes 1 over R, which becomes then the conductance. So the admittance equals the conductance if there's no capacitors or inductors in the circuit. So sometimes it, it is easier to work with admittance than to work with impedance, because when we have parallel and series circuits, we either have to use the sum of the uh, inductance or impedance or the inverse of the sum or the sum of the inverses I should say and then it may become easier to use the admittance so keep this in mind and there will be cases where it might be easier to work with admittance rather than impedance and then there's a real purpose in actually using all these terms also keep in mind that the units of admittance is Siemens which is one over the <coughs> impedance of ohms and that's how it's done <laughs>